Mr. Miyama. I shall do myself the honor to wait upon you at half past five o'clock in Barclay Square. Ten minutes? <laughs> the Yankee wastes no time. And I'll talk you and wait him below and bring him up here. And Kate, you will welcome him on my behalf. But would you have me sell myself to pay our debts? <laughs> Dear me, the package grows special. Now look, here, Kate, hook this Yankee standish, and there need be no more talk of back in this family. I know what you've in mind. You think to find him drink, women, and cards so that he pay for your... Oh, you want to package it? Thomas. Ma. He commends your miniature. <laughs> Such blushes, too. Art or nature, Kate? Okay? More natural than wit in you. Your husband will find you sharp of tongue, my ass. Blood. If only you'll have you. I must go. Looks like why the, the suit of my other sister is below. Throttle. Oh, you disgusting little man. Hush cakes. You well know Mr. Throttle is to enter on our family. Oh, but what are Helen's feelings, Mom? You may trust me to act in her interests. Well, what's wrong, Kate? Teeth none too good, perhaps. A man of parts and uh, fifteen hundred a year. Thomas. Ma'am. Mr. Trossel, my lady. Your servant, Lady Anne. A uh, dear Mr. Trossel. Miss Pettigrew. Your servant, sir. Uh, we had great news. I'm aware of it. I met with now Major Clinton, who travelled from America with your presence. Indeed, Mr. Throssell. Very little happens in London that you don't hear of. <laughs> and Miss Helen. Hey, you'll find her in a music room. Yeah, Mr. Throssell.
worried about him. Cooped up in this house for three days. He's a gentleman of moods, miss. Oh, he wasn't until he inherited this house and came to England. Tell me, what does he do with himself here? Well, he reads a great deal. It seems he found some old books and papers in the house. And then he walks about. Frequently I'm hearing him in the night, miss.
Jag tycker att jag har bättre reception till den. Jo, oh, det är ju alls gift att jag har bättre i pressen. Ja. Jag menar kanske mer show. Oh, hell en ny slide puss. Is it a show? Aunt Willoughby gave me a parcel for my birthday. But I wasn't to open it until then. I haven't opened it. I don't know what's in it. Oh, damn it, what fabulous trick is this? How did you know about Helen's present? Well, yes, sir. How did you go to the shawl? I believe it's an American test. A shawl? So it is, Mickey. But, cousin, how did you know? Indeed, how, cousin? A cousin, sir. Uh, pardon me, sir. I must have got muddled somehow. Muddled, sir? Muddled? It is not you who are muddled. Oh, Helen, here's a rival for you. Uh, look here, cousin. Uh, can you read thoughts like my sister? No, of course not. Uh, pray solve us your riddle, Peter. I, uh, I must have heard about the shawl somewhere. But, sir, you would now reach London from America. I'm afraid our cousin Peter is not well. No, I'm not. I, I've got rather a tiresome headache. And then you must rest till dinner. A Tom, I take our cousin to his room. Look here, Helen, we'll make a bargain. You help me out, 
I'll back you up. Will you? Yes, I will. Because I keep forgetting. I can't interfere with things that happen. That really do happen. You don't realize yet what your position here is. May I do anything you wish? Yes, but... Well, you'll never understand. Perhaps... Perhaps you really do marry him after all. Never. Ah, that's the spirit, Helen. I don't care much for the little fellow. And anyway, I'm quite sure there's nobody here good enough. Why'd you look at me like that? I don't know. Is there anything strange or wrong about me? Strange or wrong? I'm an American, you know, just come into this new world. That's why I'm nervous. Is it? No, 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 don't go. I have nothing in common with the others. All the others? Of human nature. But what expression in any face can elude the artist 
who painted, for instance, Mrs. Siddons, the mistress of all expressions, as the tragic muse. Tragic muse? So you, you make sport of me. Make sport of you? But why? How? No doubt you talk to Mrs. Siddons. No, I've never spoken to Mrs. Siddons in my life. I only say what everyone else knows. Surely, surely the tragic muse is painted. One sitting. That is all. I told her nothing. Not even my name for the portrait, which no one knows. But you and your sons. Ah, I'm sorry I mentioned it. Before it happened. Good day, Sir Joshua. Seems nightmare. Till I remember. 
from Greensboro. Uh, Greensboro has painted you, hasn't he? Yes. All the legend and beauty of the age cling about you. As powerful in politics, as irresistible in love. What can the 18th century offer? It can compare with... Compare with... speak of me so strangely. I find your overwhelming compliments a little disturbing. You are talking of me as we two might talk of Madame de Maintenon in the past tense. Oh no, Duchess. I never once used the past tense. But you are thinking of me in the past tense. Now I know what it is. You've been talking about me as though as though I were already dead. I, I tried so hard to make an impression. Sir, you have made an indescribable impression. You're wrong, Sir Joshua. Your self-assurance is magnificent. Are you so confident that Miss Pettigrew is not almost of a mind to break with you? Break with me. Listen, Russell. We are going to be married and have three children. One of them dies of smallpox at the age of seven and is buried in St. Mark's churchyard. That's absurd, isn't it? But you believe it, don't you? Well, let's see. You can read Miss Pettigrew's future. Perhaps you'll inform me as to Miss Helen's. Helen's? No, I... I don't know that. Oh, come on, Russell. Can't you take a joke? I don't know any more about the future than you do. What have you been saying to the Duchess, Peter? She's been repeating things that don't sound like you at all. Why, oh, I, I just dazzled her with a few cheap headbands, made up by a fellow named Oscar Wilde. A friend of yours in New York? Uh, no, no, no. No, he's dead. Or rather, he's not... Never mind, no, it's a bit complicated. You did indeed dazzle the Duchess, Peter. But you made her afraid of you, too. Dear Lady Anne. A fence was taken by the Duchess. It will be the time. And not once with Peter. And you, Helen. You have not been even condescendable to Mr. Fossil. Oh, I... Sir Joshua presents you his compliments by me. He will paint you no more. He would destroy your portrait. The portrait will not be destroyed, and Sir Joshua will complete it. Painter, have good eyes. What did Sir Joshua see? Kate! How did you first get into this house? You walked in here, but no one saw you below. You remember the rain? His shoes were dry. Kate. Madam, if I could have a few moments alone with Kate. Indeed, yes, cousin. But we must see to our other guests. Come, Mr. Fossil. Come, Helen. Come, Tom. And we are living in the 18th century, in the age of reason, the age of Voltaire. Kate, there's nothing to be afraid of. Joshua saw it. That cursed picture again. You mustn't talk like this. We're going to be married. In the morning I shall post to Budley. I cannot stay in this house with you. Kate, you can't break our engagement. So you think there are no limits to what a wizard can do with a woman? The women all press off you, don't they? But no woman wishes to dance with you twice, excepting heaven. You think you can make me marry you? But I fear you. But I fear the devil. Now listen, Kate. We're going to be married and have children and live in this house. That never happens. I'm not to turn while you're in this house. In heaven's name, go back to America. If that's where you come from. But, but this marriage has to be. You can't do this. It didn't happen this way. I'm a woman simple as if you can't do this. I've been afraid to look into your eyes. But now 
now. Look in mine. You tell me that you love me.
Jean. To you, that will be tomorrow. And yet, it will be generations after I am dead. I'll ask for a stone with the letters cut deep, so they won't wear away before you come to me. And you must come alone.
understand this has been giving you an awful lot of trouble. Well, you haven't been yourself, dear. But it's all right now. We were going to be married. You and I. It seems so very long ago. You remember? If you remember me, you can't think any longer that you're... He. Marjorie. Something has happened. Something that you could never believe. And now I... I must live here... alone. In this house? Alone? I shall keep this room. Just as it was. Always. Peter, you can't do... Why... What's that paper you have? An epitaph. I copied it just now from a tombstone in St. Mark's churchyard. Whose epitaph is it? The girl who died... 146 years ago. Who was she? Oh... The cousin of Peter Stanish. It's Latin. What does it mean? You're crying. Who was that girl who's been dead for ages? Peter, speak to me. Don't you know me? Would you rather I go? and